and welcome to worship at West Parish of Barnstable United Church of Christ. My name is Pastor Christy Burns and I invite you to participate in worshiping with us. Our theme this week is back to school in the time of COVID. We're all aware of how different this new school year is. Some of our children will go to school virtually, some hybrid and others in person. We need prayers, love, and support to do these difficult things. It's been a long, challenging six months since COVID interrupted our lives. And yet, we are a people of faith and hope. Let us draw strength in loving and supporting our children, parents, grandparents, educators, and the entire community as we embark on this time of new beginnings. While the weather remains delightful, I invite you to meet with me in person in the Garden Chapel, right here where I'm recording. Please email me and set up an appointment in the Garden Chapel where we can meet physically distance and see one another face to face. It sure is helpful to connect in person. Now I invite you to join with me in worship as Steve Gregory leads us in singing. Hi Saturday School, Pastor Reed here and I have a message just for you. First off, you need to know how much Pastor Christy and I miss you. Miss being with you, miss worshiping with you, miss doing Saturday School and Youth Group with you. 
A lot of things have changed these last six months, but you need to know that some things will never change. The first is that God loves you, Jesus loves you, Pastor Christy and I love you. The second is that what I am standing in front of here is not the church, it is a meeting house. A church is not a building, a church is the people of God and the church has never closed, it's just different now. You'll remember that Jesus told us that the most important commandment is to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And one of the ways of doing that is by sharing love with others by doing things. And over the coming weeks, I was wondering if you might help us do that a little bit as well. A lot of people in the congregation are, are sick, they're stuck at home, they're lonely, or whatever. I'm asking you to see if you could spend a few minutes by putting together a, a, a card, something like this, that says, better like that, we love you, we miss you, we care about you, whatever. Put some artwork on it, paste a picture of yourself on it, whatever. Picture your dog, doesn't matter. The important thing is to put together a card, have your parent get it to me, and I'll make sure to send it out to the people in need. I know that they would love to hear from you. And now, and now let's take a moment and I will send you off with a personal blessing. Gracious and loving God, Bless all our children and youth as they enter this new school year. May they grow in knowledge and wisdom. May they learn new ways of being all they can be. And may they be safe and healthy in body, in mind, and in spirit. I pray in the name of our brother and friend and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may we all sing together responsibly the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is on in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread. All our sins, us all our sins, and lead us not, and lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from evil, us from. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add one single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers 
of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Our sermon today is titled, Back to School, COVID Edition. It is based on Matthew 6, 24, 34, with our focus theme being, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Today's message is a word of hope, of encouragement and love to all our parents, grandparents, educators, children, and anyone who needs something to hold on to in this time of uncertainty as we or our children go back to school. Paul wrote letters to the early church to encourage followers of Jesus. And Jesus went from village to village, teaching in parables and healing the sick, restoring people to fullness of life and encouraging people to believe, to recognize that God loves them and to abide in God. I understand that there is a lot to worry about. Ask Reed or my kids, I am an extreme worrier. I worry about everything and there's a lot to worry about. And yet we are called to manage our worries, to find ways to approach this strange new back to school year in the time of COVID with hope and precautions. We can find ways to support our children if they are learning remotely. Please let Reed or I know if your child needs assistance with school supplies for remote or in-person learning. We have resources available to assist our children to have the best possible back to school experience. It is important that we draw together to virtually to teach our children that they are not alone as they navigate these uncharted waters of going to school virtually, in a hybrid model, or in person with masks on and social distancing in classrooms that are far different from their experience in the past. As a worrier, I know how my mood can negatively impact my family. The high school where our daughter attends send the parents a very helpful article about schooling during a pandemic and the psychological wellness of our kids by a mental health clinician named Sarah Waters. As I speak with families in our church and with my own relatives, I know that there's been a huge psychological toll on our children, their parents, grandparents, and educators. We are all living in this time of liminality, and yet it is a time to begin again, to start a new year to educate. Here are some of the most important things I learned from Sarah Walker on how to approach caring for our children. First, there are no easy answers. What is the correct answer for one family may be quite different from another. And there may be differences depending on each child in the family system. Socioeconomic factors play a huge role in how children will learn and thrive remotely in person or hybrid. We need to work together as a society to make the welfare of all our children matter. Justice in educational settings has taken on an increasing importance. Second, children thrive on routine and structure where children feel safe to grow and evolve. Adults thrive on routine and structure as well. 
Let us work to build in structure and routine for all of us so that we can have purpose, rhythm, and meaning in our days. And most importantly, Walker writes that the number one most determining factor of your child's 2020 experience is your ability to manage your own discomfort. When we as parents are in a state of stress, our children can pick up our distress. Walker has some ideas on how we as parents can best support our children as we go back to school in the multiple ways it will take place this year. Her ideas remind me of what Jesus is calling us to remember with the lilies of the field. We cannot control every aspect of how the sun shines or the rain falls, whether school will shift from in-person to online, and so let us all do what we can to keep ourselves and our community safe. Let us wear masks, practice social distancing, limit our social interactions, wash our hands frequently, only go to school when the children are well and stay outside as much as we can when we are around others. Walker invites us to become bamboo, deeply rooted, steady, and still able to move and flow when the wind and waves hit. As a therapist, she invites us to be gentle with ourselves and one another. Dear parents, this year will be hard. Dear teachers in this congregation, we love you and support you as you continue to adapt, change, model new ways of learning, teaching online and in person at the same time. It seems impossible. Let us not expect the impossible out of anyone. I pray for all of our parents who are managing truly challenging, balancing acts, trying to assist their children in learning while working from home. And we ask for more help, more love, more real assistance with in-person care for parents who work outside the home and need assistance with the shifting dynamics of hybrid learning or remote learning. The family school here at West Parish has done a remarkable job getting children back to school and it's a lot of work. But what a joy to see our young children learning, growing, thriving, and playing here again. I want to lift up the countless hours of work that Kristen Lind, Canada Bow, and all of our teachers have put in to prepare our classrooms and keep our children safe day in and day out here at West Parish. We shall work together to provide spaces where our children can grow and learn without worry. Let us practice as adults turning to God, taking it to God in prayer. Let us walk outside in this gorgeous Cape Cod September and pay close attention to the fall flowers, the birds heading south. Listen to the sounds of the birds and the insects and let us hear God speaking to us, teaching us to breathe out our stress and to breathe in hope. We aren't in charge of how this year will go. We are in charge of how we will process our emotions. Jesus teaches us at the end of today's lesson, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Let us be like a bamboo, flexible in the midst of what may come. Jesus knows how fragile and fleeting the world is. So let us pay attention to this moment and the next. Parenting and grandparenting and taking care of ourselves as best we can. May we do our best to model and live out resiliency, flexibility, and the ability to bend with the challenges we meet. Beloveds, as a parent, I need this sermon as much or perhaps more than some of you. We are invited not to remain in constant fight or flight. It simply isn't sustainable and it's so unhealthy. Let us exhale. Let us take a deep breath in and pay attention to the sounds of the earth. Listen to our children when they ask for help 
or a cup of tea, a hug, or a help restarting that Google Chromebook again and again. It's going to be challenging, God. Abide with us. May we all have the best back to school year we can possibly have in the midst of a pandemic. We can do this hard thing. Amen. Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Rise up this morning, smile with the rising sun. Three little birds pitch by my doorstep, singing sweet songs of melodies pure and true. Singing, this is my message to you. Rise up this morning, smile with the rising sun. Three little birds pitch by my doorstep, singing sweet songs of melodies pure and true, saying, this is my message to you. Please pray with me a prayer of thanksgiving and space for our deepest concerns. O God, who listens to our deepest concerns and knows our weaknesses, God, you teach us to let go of our constant need to worry. Transform our hearts to love. Our prayer today is adapted from a prayer written by Reverend Sherry Preston. God of ancient wisdom and sacred lessons. As a new school year begins, our hearts turn to you in prayer. In this uncommon time, when normal routines are upset and new challenges surround us, we pray for these, your precious ones. For students of every age, those sitting at desks in classrooms and those sitting at home or in dorm rooms in front of computers and tablets. Grant a thirst for learning in this new and strange day, a patience for all that is unfamiliar, comfort when things are scary. For teachers, spark within them that same passion for teaching that began their vocational path and an abiding care for their students during this challenging year. Lend your perseverance on difficult days and stir a bit of joy within them daily. Grant them eyes that see their students' struggles and creativity and compassion enough to ease them. 
for parents, oh my yes, the dear parents. For parents juggling their children's virtual learning with their own demands of work and home. For parents feeling their patience fray for those overwhelmed and frazzled and tired. For parents worried about their children's health and well-being. Grant deep wells of strength and love. Loads of grace for the journey and the reminder to be gentle with themselves along the way. For schools and families whose resources were already scarce, for whom new expectations during COVID seemed especially impossible, provide the gift sufficient for this moment. Open our eyes to see the inequities that cause harm and move us to a place where every child has equal opportunity to realize their full potential. For school administrators, burdened with impossible decisions amid complex circumstances and competing demands, stoke within them the wisdom to discern the best way forward for all, and a gentle mercy that extends to every student, teacher, staff member, and parent. For custodians and administrative assistants, teachers, aides, cooks and dishwashers and college counselors and school counselors, for their diligent work to create a learning environment that is safe and healthy and caring, for all they do that sometimes gets forgotten, we give thanks. And for all who approach this school year with anxiety and fear, for those overwhelmed by too many unknowns, we ask your peace that passes all understanding, the certainty of your unfailing presence in uncertain times. O oh, great teacher, cultivate within each of these a fierce love of learning, the ability to approach so much change with an equal measure of persistence and a commitment to the safety, health, and growth of all. We give thanks for all engaged in this great educational enterprise and pray for your generous blessing upon them. In your powerful name, we pray. I also ask for prayers for all in harm's way of the forest fires across the West. I pray for the one in eight children who are hungry in the United States. We pray for all who are ill, awaiting medical tests, struggling in any way in mind, body, or spirit. God, abide with us. Whatever it is you most need today, I invite you to lift it up in the quiet of your home. Amen. Today's offering invitation invites you to be part of the solution the world so desperately needs. This week, we recognize the importance of going back to school and welcoming hope rather than worry. One of the ways in which we welcome hope is to share of our blessings so that others may have what they need. At West Parish, we have a deacon's fund that helps out individuals or families going through financial challenges. If you could benefit from this, let Reed or I know. Our offerings allow us to share a portion of the gifts we have been so richly blessed with so that others might live. I invite you to go to our website, www.westparish.org, and click on the donate button or mail in a check to West Parish at P.O. Box 219, West Barnstable, Massachusetts, 02668. We are so grateful for each of you. Receive the blessing. One of my favorite songs as a young teen was a song by Amy Grant called Jehovah. In her beautiful lyrics, she sings, Consider the lilies of the field. Solomon dressed in royal robes has not the worth of them. Consider the lilies of the field he takes after each and every need. Leave all your cares behind, seek him and you will find your father loves you so. 
Consider the creatures of the air, for all the diamonds in all the earth have not the wealth of them. Consider the creatures of the air. Jehovah loves them with tender hand. He knows your every care. His touch is always there to see you through the night. And now may God hold you in the palm of her tender hand this day, this night, and all your days to come. You are so loved. Amen. I invite you to sing along with Steve Gregory as we go in peace. Go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith, leave the day, the day behind us, day is done. Let us go to the dark, not afraid, not alone. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Have a great week, everybody.